That's crazy. Uh -huh. It's an ancient form of Shinto mystical mountainous beast painting in Japan. Oh, really? Father yeah. learned it from the Yamabushi, Kendo Kane, Sensei, in 1961, and he taught me in 69. And the whole painting is done with one stroke of the brush. Really? You're kidding. Oh you should have seen the video when he was doing them all. Oh, uh, there's a video of the creation of them. There is. There's a movie coming out. Yes, Soon. Called, uh, spectacular. Called, uh, it's like a trance almost. Yeah. <laughs> The original mind, take the journey from the head to your heart. So my, my collectors in Hollywood have adopted it. Oh, really? Pretty good. How's school going? So, uh, it's about my work and about my journey from my head to my heart and everything. How I got here. As opposed to someplace else, which people were encouraging me to go to. Uh, what were you encouraged to go to? Uh, Kevin Moon Janini. Uh, really? At age 18. Uh-huh. That was my, in the movie it talks about this. Two people away from signing up. My collection. Oh, wow. Uh, 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 yes. Well, good. I'm glad it's 7.34. How did you Hello? Is that too loud? It sounds a little loud. It's seven thirty. Ooh. Seven thirty-four. And uh, hopefully there's enough bass there that people will uh, be happy for it. And uh, September first Friday, two thousand thirteen. Ninth first Friday of the year. We're all happy to be here with this incredible, wonderful blessing of water coming to all the, the, the little plants out there in the desert, the plants in my garden, and if you have a garden, the plants in your garden, who are all going, <laughs> we need more water, we love water, where is all our water? So we're very pleased, it's a very auspicious sign to have the rain coming down to us. And uh, I'm waiting for a guy to get here who isn't here, but uh, we'll save his uh, poem for last in case he gets here. Um, we call the program here uh, Words Falling from the Sky in the Present Moment, which means just about anything can unveil itself. In the last month, we've <laughs> endured a tremendous amount of uh, joy uh, and a tremendous amount of happiness and abundance and gratitude and wholeness for all the wonderful gifts that we have here in Sedona, in Arizona, in the United States in America, and in the whole world. Because we truly live in a place that is, uh, I know this doesn't sound a little trite. I, I call it a treasure box, but it could also be called a garden of Eden. Here on this planet where we live is a diversity of life. And that doesn't mean a big thing called life, a diversity of life, that there is a myriad of beings that are connected to us and we are connected to them. All the plants, all the animals, all the little bioorganisms, all the little invisible creatures that make it possible for all of us to live in this incredible garden. And now we've had <clears throat> serious efforts to find planets like Mars. Yeah. I believe there may be some out there, but they are few and far between. They're not everywhere. 
This is a very special sacred treasure space that is known by us and needs to be no more known by us to take care of because it, it's not everywhere. It's here and it's a gift and it's a treasure. Now, if somebody gives you a gift and a treasure, what are you going to do with it? You're going to take care of it and honor and respect it and appreciate it and enjoy it while you're here. So, um, I think that's the most important thing, you know, coming up here. We're, we're, we're in a place, and uh, poetry is coming, by the way. Uh, we're in a place where uh, the 3% thing is one of the things that I love to talk about. And uh, some people don't know about the 3% thing. It's called the thousandth monkey, or the hundredth monkey, or whatever. But they found out in Japan, they were studying these monkeys on a little island in Japan. And uh, they were watching them. And one day, this little monkey, who was different, a little bit different than all the other monkeys, he took the tubers that was their mainstay for millennium and millennium time memorial, and he decided to take it down to the ocean and wash it in salt water. And oh my god, it tasted a thousand times better. It was more fulfilling, completely invigorating. So he started going like, hey, oh, taste this. Well, you see what I'm doing? This is better than what you're doing. Ha ha. That's monkey ha ha ism. And uh, so eventually, all the monkeys on this little island off of Japan, which was far away from the main island, so there was no way that the monkeys would swim back and forth through shark-infested waters to talk to the other monkeys. But they turned out to be 3%, a little more than 3% of the monkeys of all of Japan. And guess what happened in Japan? All the monkeys started to take the food and wash it in the water. So, the way this relates to the poetry, to the art, to you being here, to the beautiful range, to this glorious treasure world we live in, is if 3% of us, as humans, can get down and touch life in all of the realms that it touches us, and deeper understanding and deeper communication, and deeper respect, we can change everything. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll take more than uh, one of our lifetimes, but uh, the time's a little bit like running out. We need to tip this balance from we're fighting all these things to maintain our superiority to we are working with all these things to understand and more deeply appreciate who we are and where we live and how we're connected to all the things that live on this planet who are part of us, whether we know it or not. So, that takes me to my newest painting, The Laughing Dragon. Now, The Laughing Dragon came from The Dancing Dragon. And if you have time, you can look at The Dancing Dragon, you can see the face of The Laughing Dragon. So this dancing dragon is discovering the jewel of the golden moment. Now what I am interpreting on a very broad way, the golden moment, is when you get into that place where you go, oh my god, I am connected to everything. All that beauty out there, it's part of me and I'm part of it and we're all alive and together and we're sharing and like, I am like ecstatic and transcendent to know this huge, immense oneness. That is who I am, and who everyone else is as well. So, this dragon here, down there, is discovering the jewel of the golden moment. He enters that jewel to discover, and when he comes out the other side, his energy has been transformed to a very high electromagnetic, bionic kind of state of he now is a fully energized potential of life with all of his energy coming out and emanating and millions 
and uncountable golden moments pouring forth from his understanding out for others to understand and to discover the joy so that they themselves can be transformed. Now the dragon represents the creative and the creative is the source of all of us and what we do with the creative is our manifestation in life. So when that man, when that creative energy gets raised up to the level that we know that we are interpreting and moving the energy of the oneness into our world with awareness of compassion and love and the intent of showing the beautiful, magnificent garden that we live in and guiding people to that understanding. They have to understand it themselves. But we can point signs in the right direction. So that's what that painting is about. And it was like this incredible thing. I didn't start that painting thinking like, well, this is what the dragon will look like after he's been in a golden boat. I thought, look, look, we made a cropping. We actually made it for a counter card of, of the little dragon's face. And God, I'd love to paint that. And I started to paint it. And then I was painting him like, well, I understand if there's something coming out of here. That is, uh, you know, this, this pretty transformational is that I can share with others. So, Laughing Dragon has a little bit of poem. It says, Laughing Dragon, transforming from your discovery, from your embrace, and from your merging into the heart of the jewel of the golden moment. There, the rebirth and activation, vivification of your electromagnetic body, which is some call, sometimes called by uh, researchers into uh, these kinds of things, the third mind. Because we have two minds, we have our own mind and left mind, and there's a third mind, and that's our subtle mind. So this dragon has got there, and he's awakened up that mind of compassionate consciousness. And he's appearing into our world again through us in our awakening uh, to help in the healing and joyful embrace of all bio kind, otherwise known as sentient beings. And I love this new word that I discovered recently, bio kind. And what it means is, uh, my understanding of any way, is that all the biology, all the living things are our kin. And they are part of us. And the bio kind is this all-encompassing word that makes a greater family of all the life that lives on Earth. And I think it's, a, it's an important concept to, uh, to embrace and enjoy. And then I've got another one here. And this is from my friend, uh, Jim Bishop, who I think he drank too much. Uh, he'd be here right now. Uh, this is birthday today. So this is kind of a birthday poem. It says, another twist completed in the great spiral dance we call life. Another laugh, another love, another joy, Another sorrow. Another tear. Sometimes it seems real. Sometimes real it seems not. Now, another day. We celebrate this in this precious present moment as it is. After all, it is just as we make it. Happy birthday, Jim. Happy birthday. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, here we go. Now I've got one more poem here uh, before I might go to other older poems. This is a new poem. And uh, this is a first draft. But it's, I think, actually, it's a second draft. But it's like, we're hoping it's going to read okay here. Yeah. And this one, in my uh, May illness, I uh, have certainly contemplated 
for a long time. It's called Apologies to the Gods. To all the gods, it's actually. It was a perfect golden moment hit. A blue-green super flash electromagnetic lightning bolt. Total annihilation. I can't hear. I can't speak. I can't see. Only white light. Only white sound. And deep within. An infinite silence. So still. Bringing in a great sublime peace. Inanna. Venus. Aphrodite. Isis. Or oh, my favorite new one, Babu. <laughs> there. <laughs> in you, the infinite treasure of your ancient wisdom soul brought to us. I see now, through a deeper understanding, your openness, your sensitivities, and with gratitude, we shall honor you with more attention, with more respect. Your compassionate wisdom view. Now as the heart speaks, a cherished prayer to honor, to know, and to respect you. Dear goddess of my heart and soul, every precious moment we share, eternally, as two, become in one, through our deeper understanding, I do together with you. And so and that comes from like, you know, this growing feeling of like, my God, you know? There's this other thing that I, uh, uh, I wanted to talk about, and I was trying to find it here. It's, it's, uh, it's about where we live and what we're doing, and the things that we are experiencing. It's, it's a treasure, and we as humans, as we as a race of beings, uh, we have a... We haven't come up for it. We gotta get better. We have to go further than what we thought we, you know, okay, wow, you know, it's like me, it's like, I don't know, two calories, cocky pocky, be in a place and stuff and live, I get to paint, I get to eat, I love food, I'm wonderful. You know, there's gotta be more. We have to push further into uh, whoever we are to bring out more energy to work on that 3%. Because, you know, you can't do it for anybody else. You can only do it for yourself. But the greater we grow within ourselves, the greater the power for everyone else. It's the same 3% deal. You know, you can say, well, 3%. Well, you can say, well, there's 1% that are pretty much getting it. Well, 3% of the 1% could be the next percent that changes the 1%. So it's not just about changing the whole world. It's about changing yourself and getting more powerful, more stronger, more compassionate, more loving, more understanding, deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Because it's only through deep understanding that we are going to be able to meet the challenges that are put before us by great nature and by uh, the seven point plus billion beings that live on the planet. And, and by the way, I figure it has 200 million is 3% of 7 billion. Whatever building. So we need 200 million people to not just sign the petition, because signing means nothing, but to live the life. The life that brings uh, more compassion, more love, more beauty, more consciousness, more health. Health is important, friends. If you don't have your health, guess what? We've all experienced this. Whenever you got sick, what did you feel like? Oh yeah, go and help somebody. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you help somebody with a leg and pick up, like, oh God, I feel like crap. <laughs> so the important thing is, be healthy. Be loving, be kind, be compassionate. 
increase your wisdom, share it with others, communicate, learn how to communicate better with everyone around you, your wife, your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, uh, your city councilman, your, your mayor, God bless his little living soul. And uh, there you go. Uh, that's it for tonight. We thank you all for being here for the words from the sky the present moment. Please come back again, Cheryl. It's great. <laughs>